constructed against any kind of utopian thinking. They were both anchored in uh, scientism, ideology of productivism, ideology of progress. Uh, anarchism was a very different experience. And the more I studied anarchism, I discovered two things. First, anarchism, the history of anarchism is written by scholars who are very oppositional, very hostile to anarchism, mostly by Marxists. And these people usually write about anarchism like it's epistemologically some kind of ideologically similar creature to Marxism. It begins when it was announced by Godwin and Stirner, then of course it was invented by Proudhon and Bakunin, and then it was enmeshed in all kinds of struggles. It's an absolute nonsense. Anarchism was not invented by anyone. It was not born with a long beard. Anarchism, <laughs> anarchism was always people in 19th century writing about anarchism did not think that they were inventing anything new. They were calling and talking about self-organization, mutual aid, direct democracy, very old concepts. And they called the radical insurgent common sense. So anarchism in that sense is very different than Marxism. Anarchism again was developed mostly in the global south, mostly in the periphery, and in the south of Europe with the fullest concretization in Spain, of course, in the 1930s. And finally, anarchism, and this for me is key both for the period of 19th century and of today, potential anarchist moment of today, display this great availability for cross-cultural fertilization and translation of struggle. It's the suppressed tradition of Western modernity. Anarchism served as a bridge towards other non-Western philosophies of social interpretations and social transformations as a vehicle of translation of struggles. And in that sense, I think that anarchism, this was, and this is, the greatest strength of anarchism. It was back during the first anarchist moment, and it is all again today, when we are witnessing a tremendous revival of anarchism. I'm hesitant to say that we are living in the third or the second anarchist moment. I'm not sure. I think that we we'll live in the period of anarchist revival. And I think it's a tremendous, tremendously important period. I think, unfortunately, that people who call themselves anarchists all over the world are still a critical minority. They're still, to quote Marx, and academic conferences, it's always wise to quote Marx, they're still out of the or the old shit, as Marx used to call it, that exists and dominates the perspective of too many people on the left. We need to break that. We need just to liberate, and this has a serious, serious significance for the way that we think about theory. We need to free ourselves of Eurocentrism. We need to decolonize the way we think. We need to destatify the way we think. We need to recreate, to distance ourselves from the orthopedic thinking of Marxism and liberalism, to create, to go back to the best parts of anarchist history, and to create new kind of theory by distancing ourselves from all those theories that brought us to this dead end that we are here. So, uh, Emmanuel Wollaston, and with this I will conclude, and see hostile looks on the moderator table. <laughs> Emmanuel Wollaston, whom I like, a eclectic Marxist who is thinking not from Europe but from the South for the most part, he said that we live in a period of transformational time space, a period that he called the Kairos, the right moment. I thought this was interesting. He thinks this is a time when there's this great transition from one historical system to another. The world capitalism is in crisis, and I don't know if this is true. However, I hope that it is. But if we are going to have any chance for constructing a truly non-imperial, non-colonialist, emancipatory movement, well, we need to transform this present moment of anarchist revival into the anarchist moment and finally to an anarchist chaos. But just to conclude, let me go back to my grandmothers, to the Balkans. Anarchism is not an intellectual tradition now that can be encapsulated in academic papers, as beautiful, intelligent, and theoretical as it is. Anarchism is something much more. It's a lived tradition. I became an anarchist when I was 13 years old. Since then, I was arrested for anarchism. I was fired from three universities for anarchism. The last one was here in the United States, University of San Francisco, when they told me they don't want their students to become suicide bombers 
and they threw me out. Liberals, not conservatives, liberals. I was beaten up because I was an anarchist. I was finally exiled from Yugoslavia, my Yugoslavia, a country that I loved because of anarchism. But I don't regret for a single second the decision that I made when I was 13 years old to become an anarchist. It is a beautiful tradition that cannot be summed up in academic papers. It's a tradition of mad stubbornness of mad love for humanity, for loyalty to the ideas of freedom, friendship, and solidarity. I don't think there is any other tradition that ever was that can offer anything like this to the people who believe in struggle for freedom today or before. I'm very proud to be an anarchist, and I'm very glad that you are here today to share this excitement with me. Thank you.